See where all the bubbles are, Munch? Stand up. You can stand up. So Lennis, the guy says, traffic, you are clear to surface. Clear to the surface. Roger that, right? City vertical thrusters, switch to VHF radio, and blow an air balance. Make way. We're going up. Yeah, you see it? Yeah, you see it underwater there? Yeah, over there. Yeah, that's right. Next to that boat. Well, that boat's working with them. There it is, Munch. Here it comes. See it? Whoa. How cool is that, huh? You get to go in there next, Munch. I'm coming with you. Hold on to there. Let me see, Munch. Look at me. <laughs> Little tugboat, huh? Go nice and slow and hold on. How's it look? Killer. some butterfly fish throughout the way. These two right in front of us, always hanging out in pairs. Those are the raccoon butterfly fish. where do you see that eel? How do you tell? Well, can't see them now. But uh, those two, you always see them in pairs because they actually mate for life. Yeah, they live to be like seven or eight years. Yeah. Staying together forever. Pretty cool, huh, Munch? Yeah, they're like the Pretty cool that they do that since you know there are. Plenty of fish in the sea. Uh, <laughs> it's like they're following us. What's those clowns? So if you did see uh, that one documentary, it's called Five Years, but it's uh, from the whaling era. Back then, uh, Lahaina was still the capital of the Hawaiian Kingdom, and it was actually really the largest whaling port in the Pacific. Great defense mechanism. That's how they get their name, the surgeon fish. That little white spot. Cartilage that is just as sharp as a surgeon's scalpel. So if any predators come by, just kind of swishes his tail and gives it a little slap in the face and gives it a cut. You know, predators don't really like cuts down here. Very pry. We have hard and stony uh, corals, and those are much more resilient to the global climate change going on right now. But those soft corals, like Great Barrier Reef, corals in the Caribbean. I actually just got back from Belize last week. Corals there decimated. There's just like a desert there. That's so many more coming by. That is so sad. Oh, uh, that one had to be straight from the warming yeah, temperatures. Literally about half the world's core. We're calling it the Angelina oh. Jolie fish. <laughs> right next to that, we had a uh, little school of the yellow fish there. Uh, different yellow fish. Those are the uh, yellowfin goatfish. They're called the goatfish because they have a little goat beard. They're, uh, they're called barbels, kind of act like catfish whiskers. Wow. Really good chemoreceptors. And it's a nocturnal fish, so at night you'll see it using those little feelers. Really tasting, smelling the sand, looking for things to eat. see a shark? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They'll digest everything. They don't even have teeth, or they don't have a stomach. They just have like teeth going down and skull. They grind everything all up. And everything else that comes out the back end, well, it's mostly sand. <laughs> but, uh, actually offered to buy the Carthaginian here for one dollar. And they took it. It cost 104 with tax, but you know, still a good 
good sale. But uh, after we did buy it, it cost about $300,000 to sink it here legally. About three years of paperwork. A lot of money went to an environmental impact statement. Had to hire an environmental team to find a place to sink it. So the place had to be uh, completely void of all coral on the bottom. Oh, if you look down in the cargo hold, there's another moray eel sticking its head out. Yeah, no coral around in this area. It used to be just basically a big desert. Yeah, you don't really want to drop an artificial reef on top of a natural reef. That's a little counterproductive. Also had to be a place that was less than 100 feet in depth. That's just going to make it easier for a scuba divers to come on down and take a look at her. We see them every once in a while. We see uh, free divers here every once in a while as well. Free divers come all the way down without a tank. Hold their breath for like five, six, seven minutes. Pretty cool when that happens. Stick your head in there and look. Pretty cool, huh? Is that fun? Yeah. Yep, thank you. There we go. That is what a sinking submarine looks like. That's what was going on the outside. Uh, while we were on the inside, dropping down to the South Reef. Every single dive, no matter what, uh, we always drop the submarine down at the same exact spot. It makes uh, just a pilot's job a little bit easier. And uh, we dropped right on top of the South Reef, which is the most southern point of our dive site. Now, when you're underwater, say you do need to have the incredible conditions that we have. 